guys, so my name is Sky. I took the new spec AQA A level maths, which I got an A star in, and let me tell you, it was work. <laughs> I think in all honesty, it was not that bad. A level maths is not as bad as people may think it is. Of course, there were times where I really struggled. Of course, there were times where I had a breakdown, but in comparison to GCSE, I probably had fewer breakdowns in A levels than I did at GCSE. You should never be in the position where you should have to teach yourself, but if you are in that position, then I am here to help you. The textbook is your best friend. <laughs> I am obviously only speaking from my experience with AQA. I do not know about other exam boards, but I would expect it to be the same. AQA, you basically had a year 12 textbook and then a year 13 textbook. It would explain the content, then it would give some worked examples of the content, and then it would give you questions with the answers in the back. So in my own time, I would simply just go through the textbook, write up the content as it's explained. If I thought that's not explained very well, I'd go onto a different website or go through a revision book and I'd compile it together to one to make sure it absolutely... So I made sure I had the absolute best revision resource I could. Then I wrote out all of the worked examples and then actually writing that out made me think about it more like you can look at it and think yeah I understand that but once you actually write it out you remember it more and then I wrote out all of the questions and answered them all in full rather than just reading the question and writing the answer because how are you supposed to revise if you do that so I wrote the title and then a little bit of content that was in the book and then I wrote down all of the worked examples the key things you need to learn I did highlight them slightly differently in color or anything just so I knew I had to learn it and then this always went on a post-it note or a flashcard or something that I knew I had to learn and then this is the exercise with the individual questions so this is the question obviously and then that is my answer and I go back to revise I will cover up the answer and see if I can do the question again to get the right answer again so doing it that way allows some more action Active revision. So when I'd be revising, I'd just cover up the answer, see if I can do the question again, reveal the answer, if I can still do it, great. If I can't, I need to work on it. And that's what I did the whole way through. If you think you are correct and the textbook is telling you are wrong, you may still be correct. It was a first edition textbook, so there actually were mistakes in it. You should check with the teacher. It's better for you to know than to be unsure. Don't stress if you can't do the red questions because in all honesty, it doesn't really matter. If when you are going through the textbook, you are finding that you don't understand something, then do more research. So I looked at Jack Brown on YouTube, uh, Exam Solutions, Physics and Maths Tutor, Old Spec Papers, Can Academy. They have worked examples on which will be similar to what are in your textbook. Book. so then that should help you figure it out again if you are starting a level maths if you are in year 11 or if you are in year 12 make sure you have a good calculator get this calculator you can pick it up in Ryman's Asda anywhere it is the Casio class Wiz. so when you turn it on you have all of those different functions in there so basically you just it makes stats so much easier that's what you need it for you literally just need it for stats so if you go on to seven you know how you do the brackets with the formula and then doing it all separately to work out a probability function using the binomial literally just put your what your probability is and then it does it for you it comes up with a it comes up with a full list of all of these answers and then you just choose which one was right for you so pick up a casio class whiz so again if you are working through the textbook on your own or if you've done mocks and you find consistently that you're getting the same sort of questions wrong this was me for domains because it isn't covered in much depth in the textbook but then they ask questions on it which just aren't related to the textbook at all. Yes, you do your research with Khan Academy and all of that stuff, but then you should also write it up separately. Put it in your revision folder, just individually, domains, a list of all examples, good things you could find online, random websites, until you find that you are secure with that. So when it comes to how I actually revised, can you guess? <laughs> oh, I forgot I did a project booked as well. So I revised using check flashcards, physical flashcards, post-it notes, mind maps, and project book. And then I used this and I bulleted. And then this is my individual maths revision folder. I got it from WH Smith. It's a ring binder, not a lever arch because it's just not necessary to have a lever arch for maths. This is a list of the questions that I was struggling with at the time. This is what I recommend having for all subjects for just to have a key points list to review just before you go into that exam. For the things that you know you always forget or the things you know you always get wrong. Just little things to remember like number of decimal places and everything. I think that's really useful. And then I have a list of questions that I got wrong in mocks or certain things that I thought were hard and I wanted to review because at the end of the day we just had so many mocks that it wasn't possible to go through it all the day before the exam. Like in year 12 yes I could have got through it all but at the end of year 13 no chance. 
formulas that I needed to learn. Differentiation, because you would find that it's scattered all throughout the textbook, so this puts it all onto one page, therefore it makes it a lot clearer. Proof, because proof is a nightmare. So you see now what I meant by mind maps, just sort of putting everything onto one page. Yeah, this is my domain sheet. Questions that I found online that really helped me to figure things out. Graphs, so you can see clearly all the different types of graphs without getting them mixed up and confused. Reflection points is one to watch because that can be a bit tricky. This is my large data set store. So if you didn't know what the large data set is, it's basically nine more of these. Again, this is part of how I learnt my large data set, but I'll talk to you more about that in a different video later. And mechanics. Again, if you're struggling with anything, just make it clear on one page and you'll find that you will really sort yourself out. This is the project book I made just before my exams actually started because I found that when I was revising, some things were sort of mixed up and could have been combined together a little bit better. So that is what all of this is, which I did find quite useful. But if you haven't got the time, then I wouldn't bother. It wasn't that amazing. So this is all stats in the green and pink. Then this is mechanics with the purple. You can actually see the amount of content that is different. Like there's so much more stats than there is mechanics. And then blue is core and I didn't actually even finish doing core because I just didn't have the time. But this is pretty much all of the content that there is. So it's actually not as much as you may think. So when it came to actually revising for the real exams, I would of course be doing mock papers, but we'd already done all of them because we are the new spec. There are no practice papers. There are no past papers to check because there is literally no resources. Even though I was AQA, I did Edexcel and OCR sample papers. I would recommend doing Edexcel more than OCR because that is the most similar to AQA. Of course, ignore the large data set. I did all those marks just for practice. And then I also went through the textbook again and blurted out any old questions to check I could still do them, especially with stats because you can think, oh yeah, I know how to do that. I know how to do that because I've done that for I can see the answer yeah that's how you do it but when you get into the exam and you're actually sat there with a question in front of you and you're just like oh no <laughs> I've completely forgotten what I'm supposed to do I think it's this but I'm not 100% sure that is why you need to blurt again if you're still struggling with certain questions this is a godsend I really do advise getting the CGP workbooks so I had this for year 12 which is what made me finally understand hypothesis testing I remember doing a question and I still wasn't understanding I got onto the last question in the workbook and then I finally did it, I finally clicked and I was so, so ecstatic. You will find the questions are very similar. I advise using this more than I would advise using the topic test. I found the topic test pretty pointless, whereas this is amazing. The textbook you actually learn from has answers in the back, but no worked examples. So if you can't get the answer, you don't know how to get it. Whereas these have worked examples in the book. So if you're struggling with a question, it will show you exactly what steps to do, exactly how to do it, which is so, so helpful. So I really do advise getting one of those and working through all of the questions. They also have mock exams in the back, which are like the only resource you will get so I really do advise getting that and if you go through your school you will likely get a discount the revision guide I'm not that fussed about I don't think the revision guide is that amazing I did pick up certain things from it but if you're wanting to save money I advise just getting that so there you go I do wish you all the best with your A-level maths journey I will be making a separate video on the large data set soon of course mine is different to yours but I will be explaining how I actually dealt with the large data set and therefore how you could possibly deal with yours so I really do hope that helps you bye